Atari 8-bit computers were built way before USB, Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth were invented. Even though their SIO port is arguably the true ancestor of USB, how difficult would it be to add those modern interfaces? Say hello to Decent USB Host, a PyPico W extension that does just that. <laughs> In order to use USB, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi inside of an Atari 8-bit computer, you first need to figure out what you'd be able to achieve. Connect USB and Bluetooth keyboards, use USB and Bluetooth gamepad, connect USB thumb drives, SD cards, and use them as mass storage, connect the Atari to a Wi-Fi network, like Fujinet, and hopefully in a way that's compatible with it, and more applications that I haven't thought about, but the range of USB and Bluetooth devices is so enormous that there is really no limit to what could be achieved. The whole platform is open source, so anyone can build on top of it. Once we have a better idea of the applications, we can figure out where we need to plug into the Atari motherboard. For supplying power to the device, we need to take ground and 5 volt from the motherboard. This can be tapped from many places on the motherboard. For keyboard emulation, we need to connect to some of the pins of the Pocky chip, specifically K025, KR1 and KR2, as well as the console key pins. For joystick emulation, we need to connect to at least one of the joystick ports. For mass storage and communication, we need to connect to the SIO port. In the future, we might even want to try and connect to the machine's parallel bus interface and to the buses of other coprocessors in the machine. That's not at all covered by the current prototype, but I've been thinking about it a lot for a future device, and the applications of that are potentially huge. The AI Pico cart has already shown how one can build an inexpensive multi-cart this way. We could also get cheap and fast mass storage, graphics cards, memory expansions, and the such, all implemented mostly in software. This is not what I'm showing today, though, and it might be overly ambitious, so for now, back to the current prototype. Those connection points that we have to the Atari motherboard all go through this connector on the front left of the device. Then, some of them go through a three-state eight-way transceiver that does level shifting for the Atari's 5 volt to the Pi's 3.3 volt GPIOs. The others go through a 16-bit GPIO extender that is also 5 volt compatible connected to the Pi through two level shifting MOSFETs using I2C. That adds 14 GPIOs, and we could add more of those chips if we need even more in the future. On the Pi side, we have GPIOs connected directly to a USB-A plug. Let's take a look at the first application, which is also the only one I could implement in time, USB keyboards. I've added a small screen to the board so we can monitor what's going on, even when we're not connected to a PC. The first thing we need to do is scan the USB port for devices being added or removed. The circuit Python USB host library helps us do that. Here, when we connect a USB device, we are able to look at its type. And if it is a keyboard, we can start waiting for keystrokes from it. That enables us to get key codes when keys get pressed or released, and we can maintain the current state of the keyboard that we can then translate using a static map into Atari row and column numbers. We can then pass that down to a PIO state machine that constantly scans the Pocky keyboard scanning lines, um, or to equivalent Python code that does the same. That piece of code pulls KR2 down to ground when the currently pressed key and the current state of the K0 to K5 and the KR1 lines coincide. That simulates what happens when the user presses a key on the built-in keyboard. Let's take a look at the signals on Pocky with an oscilloscope to better understand what's going on. Signals K0 to K5 act basically as clocks for which each frequency is half of the previous one and rising edges align. Effectively, 
that creates a 6-bit binary counter from 0 to 63. Three of the signals for columns, K0 to K2, get fed into a 4051 decoder that turns on only one of its eight output lines based on the binary code that comes in. That feeds into the built-in keyboard matrix's columns. The signal travels to one of the rows. That gets picked up by a second 4051 that is set in reading mode and translates into a zero on its output line that feeds into, into Pocky's KR2 pin if the K3 to K5 lines correspond to the binary code for the row where a switch was pressed. KR1 is used to add a column to the eight that are scanned by K0 to K2. That column is used for special keys, shift, control, and break. And finally, the console keys, other than help, are not part of the matrix and have their own lines. The USB host board takes a shortcut over the 4051s and the built-in keyboard switches and just pulls KR2 down when the binary matrix coordinates coincide with the currently pressed keys on the keyboard. So you press a key on the USB keyboard. The Pi detects that and translates it into Atari keyboard matrix coordinates. Then it scans the signals from Pocky and sets KR2 down when the coordinates coincide with precise timing. And that translates for the Atari as a key press. Doing the same thing with the Bluetooth keyboard will be very similar. Uh, adding support for gamepads will be the easiest since the signals for joysticks are very simple. SIO will come next, but that will be relatively easy since this is just a relatively simple serial port and there is plenty of prior art. And after that, adding Wi-Fi services will be pure software. Supporting multiple devices simultaneously will be a little challenging since CircuitPython is not the best multitasking programming environment, but switching to C and, and offloading as much bit banging as possible to the PIO state machines should be enough. After all, the Pi runs at a much higher frequency than the Atari and racing the bus uh, should be fine. This is only a prototype. There are things that don't quite work. Uh, basically, it's a proof of concept. Um, things work in isolation and everything is proved possible. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not completely working reliably. I'm already working on the next version of the hardware that will solve most of those problems. Uh, the biggest change I want to make is to add a dedicated hardware USB controller to make the load lighter on the Pi, uh, which will only need to receive serial data from it. I will also add a small two-port hub chip to unlock a second USB port. Um, I will also switch to surface mount components through hole was easier for prototyping, but surface mount will both be easier to source and will allow for a more compact design that will be easier to integrate into any Atari computer. And there is, of course, a lot of software and drivers to write. And there you have it. That's my little USB plus Bluetooth plus Wi-Fi Atari hack. I'm very hopeful that this can become a neat open source and inexpensive hardware platform that others can build amazing applications on.